So thank you and very, very thank you and, uh, for the opportunity to share with you some of the um, information services and support services that's available to you from the library side. And I hope that after today you will take something away that can assist you along your way as a researcher. Um, and um, yes, it is um, a privilege for me to be here. And uh, I thought to just briefly share some of the spaces in the library itself and then a little bit on what is new at the library, one or two resources. And then, like Singer said, I'll, uh, uh, hopefully we'll have time for Scopus so that I can share a little bit of that. Um, the focus won't be on search techniques as such um, in, in depth. But um, yes, you know where we are and that we are available to assist you. And then I have compiled like a library guide that has a lot of links to the resources that I'll be talking to. And uh, we will um, arrange for that to be also added to your, um, the, your website uh, for the department so that you can access it from there. Because I think that might also help you to save a little bit of time. Um, and then of course the Mendeley reference um, management system. I think a lot of you also use um, EndNote, but you know those of you who want to, to um, you know, use Mendeley, of course, then we can have that session with you next week. So um, on the library's website, there's also the, the a search box, and it is quite fine to use that when you search for articles um, on a topic. But there's a lot of more sophisticated ways in, in, in which one can search on the databases itself. So you know, the recommendation is that you would rather go to the to the databases themselves, but um, there is an advanced search here as well that you that you can uh, use, and um, yes, so so um, this is the guide that I re I don't want to say anything more about that now. Um, yeah, and welcome. And then, in terms of spaces in the library, uh, we do have the, the, the research commons that's available to students and staff, and for students up from a master's level and it is a space that's quite conducive for research so we would like to invite you you know to make use of that space and um, the access is via your student student cards there's also lockers available for you in that that area and um, yes you can also book a seminar room if you want to collaborate with one another there's a seminar room right in the um, research commons as such as well and um, I'm sure some of you I don't know some of you might have also already made use of those um, you know, services. And then you can book the room beforehand from the library's website and also I included a link to that on the LibGuide as well. Um, yes, and then I've included this slide on Press Reader, which I thought is quite a nice tool and a resource to maybe know about. Um, and it provides online access to over 7,200 uh, newspapers and magazines. Um, and it's uh, more than 200 from South Africa and it's available on your smartphone, your tablet or your laptop and um, you can download the articles and read them when you're offline. Um, there's also a little uh, what we call a wise oak, like a short video to show you how to, to make use of it. So you don't need to buy any magazines even, um, but that is just on a lighter side <laughs> that I thought I want to share that with you. And then we've also partnered with Read. I don't know if some of you, do you know Read or have you heard about Read? Because that is like an alert system um, that can also add support and maximum efficiency you know, during the research process. And um, it's an alert system and helps you to keep up to date with you know, the groundbreaking research in your area. You decide which topics and which journal you want to follow and um, you register on there and it's also available via the electronic databases on the library's website so um, you can then just like i say you can you can uh, when you're on campus you can access it and register and then you can use it on your smartphone and um, it gives a one touch access to thousands of um, articles then right on your your palm held um, and you can read topic reviews and, and it also links with, with PubMed and what is nice about it is that it links with our content. So it pushes the content then, then to you and you can use it, like I said, offline and you can also share it with your co-workers or, you know, with students. Can I ask a question about that? So if, if the uh, journal, if the university has a subscription, Access. you can get full text Yes, yes. Yeah, so, 
Yes. So you don't need to go to the e-resources and, you know, that. So it saves you that time. So it's an integrated s uh, service. Yeah. So we now have uh, access to the institutional version, um, which then links our content um, to, to your topics and the journal that you want to follow. And then I don't know, um, you know, may, you might know about these resources, but I thought to just share them with you quickly. Um, is the clinical key and up to date, which is more for the clinician. Um, and also there's quite a lot of online books. And um, in, your, in your department, uh, I, think, I, think, I think there's about 41 full text uh, textbooks in the uh, discipline of obstetrics and gynecology. And you can search over the books. Uh, you can do a search, you can browse the books, uh, you know, one by one, or you can do a search over all the content, which is the journals and the books, and there's also like guidelines and um, procedure videos and clinical overviews, uh, patient handouts. So it's a, it's a nice resource, and you can also have that on your palm health. You register when you're on campus, and then you can access it from wherever you are. Um, so that is the one, one resource and then up to date, uh, um, you, you know, you don't need any introduction to up to date, um, it is what it says. It also keeps you up to date with the latest of information um, on, on procedures and topics. Um, so from the library's website we have um, the library guides linked to that. And, um, but I also, I also have added this uh, uh, link to this guide. Um, on on the guide that I, I specifically put together for you. Uh, because as faculty librarians, we build partnerships with individuals and groups of researchers in the faculty. And when you're doing a systematic review or a scoping review, we would like to you know, recommend that you, you, you um, make an appointment with us early on in the process, um, because we can save you time, we can help you structure your search in the best optimal way. And, um, yeah, we have a lot of experience with that, and that is, I think, where our strength lies to a great extent. Um, sometimes the researchers say that they're not sure, you know, you know where their topic starts or, or their, their, their concept, especially when they're doing a scoping review. Um, so, um, yeah, that's just also something that I thought I'd like to share with you. And then in terms of uh, our research data support services, um, when you conduct research, um, it, is, it is important, I'm sure you all know, that you need to have a research data management plan. And uh, uh, we can also assist you with that, uh, should you need that. Um, we also have at, at the university now our own Sans Scholar database, database, which is for the, um, for the data um, of your articles that you can, you know, that can house that. Um, so you're welcome to contact us if you need assistance with that. There's also a guide specifically uh, to help to support you when you, when you need um, you know, um, a little bit of assistance with your research data and how to house it and how you should prepare your data if you want to house it on the Sun Scholar data, uh, database. I don't know if, uh, if uh, can I ask as a department, do you have a, a, a data repository that you use um, outside of the university, or is it uh, for the researchers themselves? Some people use Vaidka. Uh, yeah. But, um, I'm not sure how many other databases that we use. Yeah. So Vaidka is for for your for your uh, for your raw data, and then this one would be for your for 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 the data that that sort of you know that goes with your article or or your prepared data. Okay. And then when you, when you publish and you want to know, you know, maybe in which journals you can publish, we can also assist you with that. Um, and from the library side, we have invested a lot in the open access um, movement and also with the open access fund, where, you know, the researchers, if you publish in the open access journal, then 50% of your author fees um, you know, can be refunded to you. Uh, there's also this information on the library website on that as well, or you can contact me if you, if you want more information or assistance with that. And um, one resource that, that, that you can um, help if you're not, if you don't want, you know, you're not sure in which um, uh, journal you uh, can publish, you can always make use of the journal citation reports. Um, and the, actually the example I have is for pediatrics. Um, but there is then an option where you can, um, you know, you can select just the open access journals and you get a list of, 
you know, your top 20 journals. I don't know if you all know what, what the top 20 journals in your discipline um, are, you know, so, but this is also a way, as a, as a new researcher and st starting out from, um, from within your discipline, this may be a good option to go and have a look and see. Yes? Yes. I think it's it's more or less. I think it's more or less the that's that's more or less the amount. I don't think it varies uh, such a lot. Yeah. I think my colleague who works with the Open Access Fund would maybe be in a better position to to tell you that. Um, but yeah, I think I think I would say probably that that they would don't. Um, I don't think that there's a lot of uh, discrepancy in terms of, you know, what they charge. Yeah. I might be wrong. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, yeah, we also have a, gu uh, a guide on the Mendeley um, reference management system, which takes you through the whole process of, you know, how you can register and so forth. So, uh, so even after next week's session, you can also refer back to that um, uh, library guide and uh, we have also um, just generic training in the use of the resources and databases and searching techniques and the medical subject headings how to use that um, you know so we do that every so often so you can also if you have feel you have a need for a specific resource and you want more in-depth you know training on that you can also just um, you know, have a look and uh, see when the next training session will be and then sign up and register for that and uh, we would um, you know if you can make yourself available at that time that that would be great or otherwise you can even just contact us for a one-on-one -on -one session and then in terms of measurement of research impact uh, bibliographics uh, bibliometrics are often used uh, which include the citation analysis, the article analysis, and I don't need to tell you anything about that. You know all about the bibliometrics. Um, but yes, it is something that, 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 that's not um, you know, used like in a silo, but usually together with a researcher's uh, portfolio. Um, but then publication metrics can assist, um, for instance, to decide you know, in which journal you want to publish and which area of research maybe to publish in. And then another aspect of research impact includes that the author identification, uh, such as the ORCID system. I don't know, can I see, uh, I actually did get a report on the, the researchers in, in your department that do have an ORCID ID, but that was about a year ago already. And um, I, th I think that you can do, um, you know, I would hope that, you know, a lot of you would maybe, um, especially after today, um, you know, sign up for an ORCID ID because it's something as a researcher and, uh, and a, a young researcher, it's, it's good if you can have your ORCID ID and, and also the NRF now um, requires uh, the researchers to have an ORCID ID and um, what it is, is you can then, it's like a unique um, identification, like a fingerprint type of thing and it's like a digits, 13 digit code and um, you can link all your work to that then in one place. And it, and, and it works with quite a lot of uh, many, many systems uh, for funding and so on. And it saves you time in the end. Um, if you can have that and you can, you can link your work, work, uh, your work to that. And um, I've, I've also included on the guide, I've included a handout where you can, um, you know, if you want to just, um, you know, create your ORCID ID, you can do it from directly from there. Um, it's not, it's, it's, it's only um, a few fields that you need to complete and then you also link it to, to Stellenbosch, uh, Stellenbosch University and you populate your works, um, you know, from there. And then um, some of the systems, um, even if you, if you um, like, um, is it now um, uh, the one of the systems they if you, if, if you work together with them, then as you publish your works, it gets pulled into your ORCID ID and you don't need to populate it yourself. And it's especially um, helpful, you know, if you've got a, 
or if you use maybe various names to publish on, or maybe sometimes your full name, or sometimes with your abbreviated name or, or, or initials, and um, it pulls it all together in one, one place. Um, so yes, yeah, so this researcher, he was he's also from our, our faculty, and he participated in a marketing video for Orchid ID, and he said that the, 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 the real value for him is that it identifies him as a researcher. And then you can have it with your signature or whatever, and you can use it as a marketing tool as well. Okay, and then on the library's website, we also have quite a lot of videos on, on various topics, and one of them is how do you can um, add your records, uh, your documents to Google Scholar account, and then view your H-index um, on Google Scholar. Okay, so in terms of Scopus, uh, you can also use Scopus to find journals to publish in. Um, if you search under the, the, the sources and you limit it to your, fac your discipline, then you, you know, your, your, the various um, titles will, uh, will be available there and you can see which, which journals are, are indexed in Scopus and um, you can also um, you know, um, find collaborators and possible funders in this manner. Um, and if you search under the documents and you analyze the search records, um, that might also help you. Um, you can sort then on uh, cited by the highest, higher, the highest cited, cited journal, um, articles. And um, yeah, it's a way to see, you know, um, maybe other collaborators or people that you would like to collaborate with. Um, and if you analyze it again, it, it throws it out in various um, criteria, sort of little, uh, and you can see in images, and it's maybe easier to see, you know, who's the funders and who's the, um, you know, from which uh, affiliation does these articles or these topics come from, um, which countries and so forth. Um, so maybe I haven't asked how many of you have been using Scopus to search. So there is there's quite a few of you, um, but I hope for for the others that it's that that's new to Scopus, it will sort of you know make you think about some aspects how you can make how, how you can make use of the database, except just for you know searching for information on a certain topic. So yeah, coming to that. You know, when one starts out to think about your research topic and your search strategy, you need to think of your concepts and so forth. So I just included a worksheet also for maybe when you're doing a scoping review or whatever. So, you know, how you can think about that. Um, so it can help you to give structure to your search strategy. And then, of course, if we talk about the search strategy, it always remains the same. You need to think about your keywords. You identify your concepts in your, in your research topic. And then for each of those concepts, you need to think of synonyms because we find that students often, they, they, they start, start out searching and then they get into a, you know, uh, into a sort of, a, they, they, they fall into a, a situation where they get stuck and they can't really, they can't really think and it doesn't break open the, the topic for them. So if you start thinking about synonyms and so on and you search a little bit broader, then of course that can, can help um, help to get to the information that you need. And also the Boolean logic even, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly for us that's been using information and searching for information, um, you know, we know about Boolean logic and so on, but a lot of students, they, you know, they say, but with the ors, can I add another one? You know, so, so they're, they're not sure what they can do with it. So in the end, it comes down to, you know, using the and and the or uh, and the not uh, operators um, and the Boolean logic, as we know, was, um, you know, it refers to the, a German mathematician who, um, you know, sort of started with these Boolean logic to search on databases. So, um, yeah, and it works well even today. So, in, in an instance, this is, this is typically what it looks like then. So, you've got one concept and you say, and you want either one of these concepts and this concept in the same article. And you can have as many ors if you like, uh, according to your information need, as long as you just put them in round brackets, because that, that then nests sort of all your ors. So it's either one of these terms with 
the other term. And um, yes, so then you combine your, your keywords and your concepts to make sense according to your, um, to your uh, information need. So that's just in short, you know, a little bit on that. So yes, so we're back with the, with the, um, with the library guide. So what I did, I, these are recommended library resources and these are typically what I, I spoke about now to a great extent. Um, so I gave the, you know, links to, to the resources here. Um, and then on this side here, there's also some useful links. Um, okay, I've got, let me just see. Yes, like um, for your, uh, sometimes that the students, you know, the they Google Scholar settings aren't set up um, in order for them to access our resources, but if you set up your, your, your uh, Google Scholar settings on your computer um, in a certain way so that your library links are activated for Stellenbosch University, then, you know, as soon as you search, then that links will be active if we've got a, a subscription and it also makes it, you know, so much easier for you to just get the full text from there because students also... On campus and off campus, and campus yes. Yes, if you use the if you if you use the resources, uh, maybe you, you yeah it, it does it does, it it works on campus and off campus. And then if you off campus, uh, we also find students also have a lot of problems sometimes due to the hardware and the software on their computers and so on, um, to you know to log in and to use the library resources. So we have compiled a library guide specifically to assist our users when they use the library from off campus. So you can, you know, when you struggle, you can have a look at, at, at the information that's available there and that should also assist you. And um, yeah, I think um, that is more or less what I wanted to say about the guide itself here. So I think we can go to Scopus now. Let me just see if I can go out of here and then... Yes. 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 The, 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 those hyphen just um, is in place of a, it's just a place marker for your topic. For, for the one concept. So for instance, it's post-operative and maybe you're thinking of another spelling. So it's either post-operative as one word or post-operative with a hyphen and that's in round brackets. So it's either one, the one or the other together with maybe, you know, um, the next concept, yeah. So now it's just a question of getting my screen again on there. Just want to see here. Should I say duplicate? No, screen okay, only. No, 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 on one screen only. Yeah. Screen only. So must I say duplicate? I think so. Okay, screen, screen and extend. Let's say duplicate and extend. Okay. 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 Ja, doe maar extra sommen van hier af netwerk. Ik heb die nou jullie meer nodig. Oké, okay, bye, dankie. Oké. Okay. Um, I know. Nou, Jan. Okay, so to get to the, e, the, the Scopus database, um, of course it's just from the library's website, the e-databases, and um, I'm going to, I haven't got it on my computer here, so excuse me if I'm just going to 
to watch the, the screen here. It might be a little bit slower now. Um, Let my scope is die. <laughs> it's a bit. Okay, let me let go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you can either do then a, a search for documents or you can search specific authors or for affiliations or your advanced search where you just got a search box. But um, I'd just like to, in, like to um, do this one. Strictrix or, and I will... Or maybe just leave it like that. So, um, what you what I, what I have here is a question mark um, in the middle of the word gynecology. So the question mark is also a placeholder for any uh, any uh, you know a spelling difference. So the a e or the e. So you can use that that um, question mark, and then the asterisk would be the uh, like a wild card where it will take any ending of that word. So it will take gynecology or gynecological or you know, various endings of the word. Um, and then you, you can say, for instance, you want to search for a higher level of evidence and you maybe systematic reviews. You can do that uh, and add that here. And then um, you can just, when you want another concept to add it, you can just click on the plus sign and you get another uh, option where you can can then um, add something. So let's say post operative or post operative. Just maybe you're not not so sure what spelling or whatever. You can just include that as it is like that. And then when you're happy, um, then you can just click on search. I should just now find it here. There we go. The search query. And you can see your documents that you've retrieved here, the, the, the number of results, and then your, your references here in this section. I wonder if I can, if I minimize it, if it will be, yeah, that will be, is it still, or is it too, is it fine? Okay. So here you can see your, uh, refine, how you can refine your results uh, with various options on this side. Um, you can, for instance, see um, you know maybe specific type of um, funders or even your affiliation. You know you can see where the research comes from um, and uh, the publication. What does that say? Publication. I can't even read there now. Sorry. <laughs> um, but your funding and the the source type. Maybe you want to limit it to just. Um, journals um, and then you apply your filters what you selected and um, yes then you then in that sense you can do that you can also edit your query here and this is also where you can save um, your search your query so that you don't need to repeat it and if you register on Scopus you create an account and then you can sign in and when you sign in you can then save your search and you can set up an alert and that is also useful if you're doing your research over time then you don't need to repeat your research but you will get the the, the results will be pushed to you um, you will either you can set an alert or a feed 
Um, the alert will be emails and the feed usually you need to click on yourself and it doesn't come into your inbox. So because some people say it makes, you know, clutter their inboxes. So you can use that. Um, and then, let me see what I can show you here. You can... Show them how to download. How to download. How to download. The, yes. Some of the yes. Like you, you, yeah. Yes, so here you can either, this is where you can batch process your results. So you can either click on all if you want to do that, but usually you just select a few. So you just tick these boxes over here. And um, then you've got an option to, to then uh, export them or you can, if you export them, it's very easy because you can select Mendeley here or um, for EndNote. Um, you know, the, the RIS format for that, and you just click export. So it's, it's very easy to do that. You can also, um, then the ones that you've got there, you can even do um, add to a list, which is quite handy, because you can from here, sorry, let me just see here. What did it say here? Uh, view or manage your list. Um, let me see if I go there. Oh, there, as this is actually what I want to show you. If you want to create a bibliography, then which you want to share maybe, you can do that in a PDF format. Uh, the PDF is quite nice because then it's hyperlinked within Scopus. So if you share it with students or among one another, you know, you can just click on it there in the PDF and it will open up. Um, and you can, you can select the style of your choice uh, the Vancouver style or whatever, and it will do it in that, in that sense. It will arrange it for you. But usually you um, select a few and then you can just uh, print them or, or, or email them. And then the option is also to save them, um, the records there. Okay. Um, and uh, again, with the analyze the search result, you can also, what you can do here, you can sort it uh, via the cited highest. So you can, the ones, the articles that's been cited most often will then be on top of your list. So if you want to do that, that's available, the sort option. And um, again, like I said, if you analyze the results, it will break up this, your, this set of um, uh, documents into certain criteria, and you can see always from 2018 to nine or oh, year, the last part is always downward because I mean we're still in this year. Um, uh, but otherwise, like this, this is how you can then, then that I talked about in the in the presentation where you can then see, um, you know, um, we in this topic which countries are prolific in their re research. With, but this is also you must always remember just in terms of Scopus. Um, I mean, there's also a lot of other databases where people, not, not everything is indexed in this database, so you can't say, but it will give you maybe an indication just on, on what is going on in that, in that field, uh, for instance. Um, and then if you, if you select a specific record, I just want to show you that. What you can see then, um, okay, yeah. let me do that and then I'll, I'll just want to, I also want to just show you how you can go forward in time. If you, <clears throat> if you find a, an article and you feel that it's a good article but it's not really, you know, you would like to use something more recent, how, how you can do that. Um, but here's the document detail itself where you get the, the reference and the title and so forth and the abstract and there's also metrics for this journal. For, uh, for this article, where you can see, um, you can view all the metrics um, and see, you know, where it comes from. How, how do people sort of react to this in the social media, to the specific uh, article? And then what's also available from this page is the last few um, articles that have cited this, this journal. And you can also create an alert um, for the specific for the specific um, uh, document. There you can see you can set a citation alert. So every every time uh, somebody you know cites this article, you will be informed. 
and then also <clears throat> for the yeah that's that's basically that and then when you when you start doing your research in, um, on a certain topic and it's the topic is new to you you can also check the keywords uh, for these records and to see how do people um, refer to these, um, you know, this topic and what are other keywords uh, maybe that you can use to search for, in, for information. Um, so that is also available from this, this record. Um, yeah. So if you go back to the search, oh, I just want to want to show you, um, let me just see. <coughs> The, the history is all <clears throat> always at the bottom and you can use the search history to also combine your searches. So you can, for instance, say um, you, want, uh, you, know, you want to combine number one and two. So you usually just click, click here or you can just, 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 just say there, you can just um, say you want step one and step two or step one or, st or step two. So again, your Boolean logic you can use with your um, with your um, search history um, to do that, as it makes sense, of course, according to your information need. Um, I just want to go back to the <coughs> to the documents here, and um, for instance, say for instance, of course, now to get to the full text, you can view it at the publisher. But um, often, you know, the publisher won't recognize that you're coming from Stellenbosch in this instance. So um, you can use this Find It link um, to, to find the, you see, because then it will open if, if we have a subscription, um, it will open up. But I find sometimes it goes to the, uh, that catalog, you know, that I showed you in the beginning. It goes to that, that link. I just want to see if I can open it in a new link and see where this one goes. And then it sometimes goes to the level of the journal and not the, 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 the article level. So it's a, how the publishers have set it up. So I think for you as a researcher, it must be frustrating. Sometimes you want to get to the full text and it doesn't go there immediately. So um, what's also an option, uh, what you can do, this one is from 2019, for instance, is just to take the, um, to copy this into um, into Google Scholar if I've now, now I've, I've now made a typo there I think oh, it's a C, the C there um, am I in the right space oops 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 is it correct now? Like that? Not? <laughs> Sorry. What must I do now? Oh, hats. Oh, no, 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 that won't work. Let me try again. Scholar.google.com. Okay, I need to go back backspace. Okay. Okay, so then, with all those typings, I've now made it that it can't think what it needs to do. To do. <laughs> so, um, so okay. So here, um, if we find the article, then you can see, for instance, these the um, HTML format sometimes it's already um, you know available and then you see this one here for instance the settings are correctly set up so you can see the full text at Stellenbosch link here but that's not what I want to show you I just want to show you that this article say for instance this is the article that we want to go forward in time and see who has cited this and you want a newer article newer uh, yeah an article that's published at a later stage um, and in future, you can, if you, if, you, if you use the title of the article and you paste it in Google Scholar, then if you go to Web of Science, um, then that will open up the Web of Science database, which is also a very, um, you know, um, uh, a good database to use <coughs> for, um, for your uh, discipline as well. And, um, you see this one, it went to the title, yeah, to the, 
So, so it, it hasn't. It, it gives us the link to go to the to the level of the journal and not the article. Whereas with this one, um, you know, you can you can immediately then just click on the link there and it will open up the the article there. So that's quite quite quicker. I just want to see this one if it's opening now. I wonder if I've got my iNet key. I think my iNet key is closed. Um, so I wanted to show you that. Um, and then, of course, on, on uh, Google Scholar itself, you will also get citations to this article. Um, that's then, then a, a newer. I mean, we've, you know, you know, um, in the past, if you want to go back in time, you make use of the article if it's a, a something that you're interested in, and you look at the reference list <coughs> of that article. But this is a way in how you can find other information, other articles. Um, that refer to, to the article that you're interested in. And um, I, I think it doesn't, um, it no. Didn't want to open up. Um, yeah, the gateway, I think this, I think it's my INET key that's not open at that stage. But when you get into Web of Science then, you will see then articles that cited this article and even then some of those have already cited um, those articles. So that's how it's like a snowballing effect. Um, you know, where you can get to um, newer research on a certain topic. Um, and then if uh, with Scopus, you can also search, like I said, for the, for the affiliation. Um, so it's best to, to just type in the affili affiliation that you are looking for. Um, and then it says Stellenbosch University. Um, and then, and the same with the authors. If you want to search for a specific author, um, again as well, it's better to, 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 to use the author there than to type it from the, if, if, if you type in the, um, um, you know, the, the documents and search under the author field, it's better to do it in, in this sense. Um, Okay, it's a bit difficult for me to search from here because I think my spelling is... Um, so here you can see, for instance, then what you find, you can see here, say for instance it is um, um, Prof. Werendahl, uh, how year? Is that not also Werendahl? Wie is wie? another year. So if you select those, then um, oops, well, almost now again. Then you would be able to see, you know, the the records, um, the 202 documents that um, you know is related to Prof. Urdenlal, for instance. Whereas if you search here and you go documents and you search word and doll, then you will find less. Yeah. So it's better to search via the author, author um, indication and it makes sense. Okay. And um, I think other than that, uh, maybe the sources, if I can maybe just um, say that you can from, from the sources uh, tab, you would be able to then search, uh, but I already mentioned that in my in my talk, that you can then um, you know look at a certain um, to see which journals are also indexed in this database and from what year and so on. If you want to go into that detail, um, but that's just um, just something uh, that I can mention. Okay, so I hope that. Uh, you have learned something and uh, that you would, um, in the end, I just want to also extend an, you know, an invitation to you and uh, whenever you need help and you uh, get stuck, we are available to assist you. Okay. And is there any questions? Can I just ask about the download function? Because in the past it used to give very good results when it was linked to the university. So if you say select a few... This is SFX. No, no? In, uh, do, do. If, if you just do a straightforward Scopus document search, yeah. um, and then you click um, 
on a few articles in that little box and you see, you say, just go to documents, just search for a document of some sort. Let's I say just, well, I just, I'll just click on this link here okay, to yeah. just get something up on the screen. And then, and you, then you click mean, in, yeah, uh, over Select here. a few articles, yes. um, maybe four or five. And then yeah. go up to the download function there, um, the second one. No, download, there. yeah. Um, okay, so get the extension. And now, in the past, it used to get, get all the articles nicely, full text, PDFs, um, if it was on the university website um, yes. or university license. But it's a bit more difficult now. I don't know what happened. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but you could... Um, I don't know if anything that should have changed. Um, so you, 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 do you feel? You can then go through a different route. You can get the articles, but you can't get it from Scopus. Yes. Anymore. Okay, so you used to get it. It's not your settings on your computer. It's, it's really like um, an explosion that happened um, because when I was a registrar, we. It was very difficult. Um, you had to go to Index Medicus to do your search. But now the explosion is just so big. And, and, and what I want to know is how are we protected against bogus journals? Because um, they are just flourishing. They are just also increasing in numbers by the day. Because virtually every week I get a request to serve as a edit on the editorial board of a journal. That, that's completely out of my field of interest. That may even be out of medicine. Or I get a paper to review, um, which is also sort of... Or I get a request that we are short of, of papers and our, our journal needs to be published tomorrow. Just send your paper, you know. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and they still, they still, uh, they still actually claim that it will be peer-reviewed. How, how they do that, I don't know. So, do you uh, d do you take any measures to to make sure that we don't have bogus journals included in our uh, in our database? I did put in a request to our International Society, FIGO, 
And I said, please, please, they've got the publishing committee, one of the committees, and I said, establish a list of journals that's not bogus journals, um, that we can go to the list and we know that FEMA approved all of these journals. But, but they, they really didn't, didn't stir much interest, so I sort of lost that uh, battle, but I may have to take it up again. The, the other th point I want to make is in the past we, we published theses and they were bound in nice leather uh, uh, and with golden letters on and they ended up on a shelf, decorating the shelf and nobody knew about it. And scopers have changed all of this because uh, now uh, any thesis that's published at our university goes onto scopers and now it's, it's available internationally on the database. And I, uh, this week I did a search on, on the, on the traditional medicine often used in, in KwaZulu-Natal uh, called Easy Slambezu. Um, and, and when I typed it in on Google, uh, uh, actually a PhD that was done at the University of KZN came up, um, which I would never have got otherwise, because it was never published. There's no, but the PhD thesis was done, and there was such valuable information, and, and it's because of this linking of all the all the data together in in um, things like Scopus that actually makes this possible. Yes, and also the open repositories that's available through the various universities, and I mean from our university, it's also our uh, scientific journal that we repository where our theses are, are uh, also deposited and then, then we make sure that it's linked to if all other, you know, we, we, we link it wherever we can to make it visible. Um, so the visibility of your research is very important. And um, yes, uh, Google Scholar, uh, we also had a request uh, just the, the day before yesterday for somebody who also wanted a, uh, you know, um, a thesis. And then, um, you know, but, but he said, no, he couldn't find it. And he went on various websites. And then when we used Google, uh, sometimes also also Google in this instance, and not only Google Scholar, because the Google is more like for books and so on. So it's not always maybe on the Google Scholar platform, but on Google, and he put in the title there. And it came up because it was it was just delivered, you know, uh, it came via one of these open repositories. And that is, that, is, that is why the open movement is also important because, I mean, as researchers, you know, you publish and, you know, you, so I always, I would also always advise um, researchers to, when they publish, um, um, you know, in a, even in a, uh, you know, if, if your article is behind a paywall, just to ask and to, to you know, sort of um, make sure that you can at least have a postscript of the article. On, your, uh, on, on our university's repository. So at least the information is there, even if it's not, you know, with the, with the trimmings of the article. I know it's not always possible, but, um, I mean, we've had instances where we now, you know, we have to buy back sort of our own research um, that's, that's been done. And the researcher don't even have a copy of it. So that's just something to be aware of as well. We must just ask um, our head of the department to close his ears. I don't even know what's not there. Um, <laughs> um, but is the link to the magazines on the spot? Yes. <laughs> 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 Could you show us, please? It's <laughs> under the desk. Just go to Place Reader. Just go to Place Reader. From the Hintron Institute, it's under it's not a Is that a P? Yes. Is that one? Yes. So the
they probably within the next, I don't know how long, um, somebody will give it a problem for the system that. Uh, if there is any issue, there is nothing else then we would like to say a special thank you to you for coming presenting this very supporting talk here. Um, so for those of you who are not for those of you who are not here at the beginning of this lecture, next week we'll be having our session at the library. I don't know if you have directions to where exactly in the library. It's in the e it will be in the e classroom. Yeah. So also on the on the guide. I also have an interactive, a link to an interactive um, plan of the library's uh, floor plan. So even if you don't know if you are, but I mean, I'm sure you've all been in the library. If not, uh, we will welcome you there. We will be very uh, glad to have you there. So when you come into the library, you will find that your, the, the vending desk is to your right. So you just keep this like a, a tree in a, in a, um, in a quarter. And the e classroom is to your left, you'll see it there. Yeah. Yeah. Just one, one comment was around this about years ago, was when somebody was speaking for you, and they asked, Where are you? Then we just said, We're in the library. Yes. <laughs> you can also sit there behind the shelves, or to be given. Say that to you there. <laughs> yeah. okay. And uh, just on the side. Maybe so a representative as well. So mm -hmm. don't rush away just after the meeting there will be somebody in the next door. So there are some kids in yeah. the not going to next door. No eating. No, they will be in the room next door. They will be in the room next door. And on the side, not related to what we're doing here, I circulated an email last week about charging. Can I see by show of hands who are working on protocol development? There are some heads which are not great people. <laughs> <laughs>